Hey guys, James here, also known as Bish, and welcome back to the Dark Souls 2 playthrough. We are now on episode 12, and uh, we are ready to rumble. Again, sorry about um, last week, uh, the last episode. Um, it was a, uh, a bit of a mistake on my part. Hopefully everything's working this time around. I've done quite a few checks to try and get everything right. Um, okay, where were we last time? We had killed... Um, the Rotten, and we'd also killed the Iron, um, Iron Keep boss, I can't remember his name now. Um, and we also got ourselves two Sublime Bone Dust, so we're going to use those right now. Let's see, burn, and we burn our Sublime Bone Dust. This will give us a, uh, a S Flasks, which will improve our health each time we actually... Um, consume a an essence flask, so we'll get more health out of an essence flask, which is nice. Okay, so we've got 57 souls, 57,000 souls. We've also got some extras as well. Um, so I'm just going to use those. Um, we'll just do a bit of leveling up, probably. Because our strength is what's important. Uh, I think that's probably a good idea to do. It's probably a good idea to uh, increase that. So in today's episode, I think we are going to continue on and try and get through the primal bosses as quickly as possible. Um, so the next primal boss I'm going to go and try and kill is the Sinner, I think. I think that's where we'll go. So if we start... I don't know where the best place to start is, actually. Go there. We've got a we've got a um, Ferris Lockstone. So if we go there, we'll be able to probably get to the Lost Sinner uh, quite quickly. Lost Sinner is probably one of the easiest. I think probably is the easiest um, out of the lot when it comes to um, comes to the four primal bosses. Okay, good. I have come in this area, this way then before, so that's good. So I'm going to take these dogs out. And we're just going to go down this way. Um, take out all these guys and continue forward. Uh, I might have done this in an earlier episode. Probably have done. Oh, hold on. I've been invaded by someone. That's different. That doesn't usually happen. Not, not in this area, at least. Let's not get killed by this guy first, though. Here he is. Okay then. Let's do this. <laughs> He's being an asshole as well. Well, that was <laughs> that was really pointless. Right, okay. Um, now that he's been vanquished, yay, yay! First, our first victory. <laughs> wow, that was unbelievable. I've um, I've never had someone invade me and do that on me. That's just ridiculous. It was, it was bad enough that he took loads of health off me. <clears throat> anyway. Let's continue down our path and let's just forget that ever happened. Almost got humiliated. Okay. So we're going to continue down this path like we did last time, except for now that we've got Ferris Lockstone, we can continue on. Uh, I'm actually, oh, I'm, I'm doing this all wrong. Um, the reason why I'm saying that is because I could have just gone to uh, Strades. So, in fact, instead of going through all these enemies. I'm just going to run through it all because we've already been this way. Um, okay. Yeah, I definitely have been this way because I've opened the wall. Opened these. Yeah. Anyway, let's uh, let's try not to repeat parts of over episodes. And let's just get on with the bits that we really are meant to be doing. <laughs> I apologise. This is uh, my fault. Being really stupid and... Uh, Forgetting where I've been up to and what I've done and all that sort of stuff. So, 
So yeah, I should have just gone to strays. I don't care, that was weird. Oh, that was lucky. Okay, so we're going to press this lever. Um, it's up there with Strayed's uh, tower. And that's where we're going to go there in that fog. And first of all, take this guy out and get a couple of nice life gems. Not too shabby, if you ask me. We've got 20 inside the uh, uh, the depths, though. Last episode, so don't really need that many. These guys have got really terrible shots down here. This boss air well this um, bonfire in that we're, go we're going to find in a second is probably one of the worst bonfires of design I've ever seen um, and yeah that guy falls down <laughs> he's such an idiot um, and you'll see why when I get there I'm, I'm right there right now so this bonfire up here what it does uh, you spawn here and if you were asked at this bonfire, all three. Oh. I forgot about that the gar gargoyle comes the first time that you um, go to the bonfire. That's a little bit of a spoiler for you for later on, that is, actually. So, yeah, there should be. Fr there's usually three guys up here um, that uh, spawn just here. I'm not going to spawn them because I, I generally just do not want to deal with them. Um. But, yeah, you spawn literally in front of their view, which is just ridiculous. It is one of the stupidest boss, um, bonfires in the game. I'm actually human already. Of course I'm human because I've been invaded before. Why? Let's use a life gem. I have no idea. We're going to use a bonfire. Uh, bonfire, I said it. We're going to use a repair powder. And we're going to go down to uh, the sinner. It's... Um, pretty tricky to get to the sinner because there's a couple of annoying monsters but um, it's nothing that we can't handle now there's three I think there's actually well yeah there's four actually I thought there was four um, oh no that guy just dropped down on me uh, usually there's there's three arches down here uh, and they, they sort of try and ambush you what the heck hell is that guy doing? I don't know. Anyway, let's go down. Let's continue down. And let's um, make our way to the center. Now, if we drop down here. Ooh, that was close. We get some uh, knives from there as well. And here is Lucateel, remember rightly? Yeah, Lucateel joins us. Yeah. Lucateel, I uh, she will be able to help us out in this boss fight quite a bit if you ask me okay so this area the reason why it's so annoying to get to the center is you're covered in water and you've got these monsters here now, these guys are a bit mental as you can well see you need to be very very careful it's always best to have Lucatia with you for this because that move is just crazy powerful. I don't really want Lucatiel to get close to being killed, really, because um, she can be fantastically helpful. But, all right, yeah, no sublime, sublime bone dust there as well, which is kind of nice. Um, this wall here is actually a... Uh, press A to open wall and will allow you to get the Northern Ritual Band which is very good for um, well, pyromances or anything like that. Any, any Anything that needs slots I think, I remember rightly. Um, let me just see what it does. Because I think I, I think I was right. Uh, yeah, Northern Ritual Band. Increases spell uses uh, but reduces HP. Oh, okay. No, that's not the one I was thinking then. Still a, a, an interesting ring, nonetheless. All right, so I'm gonna get let Lucatiel go in, coming in, uh, come in first on this one, so that uh, so that I don't get hurt while I stab this guy in the back. Okay, come on. I hate this monster. I just 
absolutely hate it. His moves are just so difficult to, to kill, uh, to uh, to dodge out of the way of, especially when you've got this water. Bellkeeper bow, that's very, I think that's quite a rare rare weapon to get from that from those guys. I can imagine so. Now this next area is a bit of a pain in the ass as well because we've got these petrification guys that just sit there in the water. You can't really see them, um, so you've got to be really, really careful. Uh, we're going to go to the left side here and we're going to take this guy out first. There's another one waiting in the water there, you see. So you've got to be really careful. Uh, take each room f as, you, as you go before you go straight to the, the gate because they will just come from behind you and just own you. So be really, really careful in this area. Um, there's some more in one of these. I can't remember which. It's not this one. I think it's, it might even just come behind us now. Or maybe I was wrong. Nope, I was right. Okay, cool. Um, so the main way to go is this gate here. So if, as long as you just do exactly what I just did then, uh, you should be fine. However, there is two more gates at the top there and there. Um, I got there actually just quickly anyway because I think there's a couple of bits of treasure. Nothing important, but uh, I'll quickly go up this way anyway and just show you. Um, up here, there's these little side areas and one of them I think has got treasure in it. Uh, this one can't be opened unless you've got a key. Um, it is the Bastille key which you get for killing the gargoyles later on and also um, getting to the last bonfire of Bastille. Um, that is kind of a spoiler that I, I was hoping to save really, but I don't I don't mind showing you telling you that uh, the gargoyles are back this time. Uh, it, more than two of them as well. There's actually three of them inside the boss fight, which is going to be... It's um, it's an interesting optional fight. You don't actually have to do it. So this is lots as well, so you need to get the Bastille keys for those ones. Uh, the main way, if you don't want to do it without the Bastille, if you want to do it without the Bastille, Bastille key, is going this way. Um, and that is fine. Now, um, a good thing... The thing that I like about this fight is again if you've got the Bastille key uh, or Bastille whatever you whatever people call it um, you can open these doors and as long as you've got some a flyer a, a, um, a flame lit you can light the um, there's like a little spot in there that you can light and you can do the same with the other side as well and if you do that um, the boss room will become lit up and the reason why that's important is because in this boss room the room is very, very dark, so it's very difficult to lock on to the uh, to the sinner. But if you've got uh, if you've got that actually, if you've got the room lit up, then you can just lock on to onto her whenever you want. Uh, the sinner is uh, is a girl. Um, I just don't know which one to choose here. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go with fire. Let's go with fire. We've got uh, life gems that are ready if we need them. And I think that's just about everything. Okay, let's do this. Come on, Lucas Deal. So this is the Sinner. Probably one of the most disgusting um, introductions to a boss, in my personal opinion. I mean, I'm not really that bothered about uh, about bugs but that is just disgusting to have like a bug just go straight into your eye into your eye so as you can see it's very difficult to lock on um, if I go too far away from what you just completely know that wasn't me do unlocking them that was uh, that was the actual game so this boss fight is all about just taking your time and taking uh, and getting the hits in when you can also heal when you can because this monster's a bit weird. Oh, why have I just done that? Wrong one. I'm gonna use a life gem. The lost sinner is is not unbelievably difficult, but uh, can be a bit of a pain, especially if you're a newcomer.
say that, I'm probably going to get killed. Wouldn't surprise me. Lixiel's still alive at the moment, which is nice. I really want to keep her alive, to be honest. Oh, Gilda. I killed her. Nice. Awesome. So, yeah, um, if you keep Lucatiel alive, then you can continue her quest, quest line as well. You don't have to keep her alive just for this boss fight. As long as she survives or uh, you kill three bosses with her um, without her dying, then you can continue her story on, which is nice. Okay, so that is another primal boss defeated. That one, I must admit, is probably the least epic of the lot. Um... But it's done, and I think another sublime boss, sublime bone dust is in order. Oh no, Frank Badge, you're an Elizabeth mushroom. I thought it's different. Okay, fair enough. I'm guessing that this is probably the room that one of the next DLC, the final DLC, is going to come uh, go to. I think maybe, or uh, or the other primal boss, but I'm not sure. So it turns out that we may even possibly get to the next primal boss this episode, actually, because we've just done one already. Um, however, there is a lot to get to the fourth one, I remember rightly. So let's rest the bonfire. Let's get our last Sublime Bone Dust uh, activated. And we've now also got some more souls again to spend. So let's um, do a bit of leveling up. So I'm just thinking now how much... Um, how much more strength now are we going to need before we can start using some of the heavier weapons? After all, we are a strength build, and we want to be starting to use some heavy weapons, don't we? So let's um, let's level up and see what, how far we can go. 43 to 49. So if we get one more, we can basically get most of um, and get most of the uh, the strength build weapons. Pretty, pretty much all of the strength build weapons actually um, equipped, which is nice. Um. The Gurmat Great Axe is never really that great anyway, so I, I never really use it. There is one weapon that I do really want to use, however, I haven't got it right now. Um, it's one of my favourite weapons. And it is just so much fun to use. Uh, it, I think it takes 50 strength to wield it. Have I got... Hmm, we might have a chance of getting it. So let's go do that first before we continue on. So we're going to go to um, Firekeeper Dwelling, and we're going to I'm going to go and speak to the crows. I'm going to go and give some items to the crows because there's one weapon uh, that I really like, and you can get it. The only way to get it is from the crows. Um, the weapon is um, the ancient. I think, it's great. I think it's the ancient great hammer, if I remember rightly, or something along those lines. Um, and it is just so much fun to use. So let's. Um, I may have even made made a video of it at some point, actually. So we're going to leave these items on the floor. You can only leave one at a time, otherwise it won't work. Um, so don't leave four at the same time because it, it just won't work. Okay, so let's uh, see what we get. Faint stone, no no use for us at all. Uh, Titanite slab, that's not too bad. Dark Knight stone, not really important. Poison stone, no. Titanite shard, load of rubbish. Amber herb, load of rubbish. Life gem, load of rubbish. Petrified dragon bone, damn it. So we didn't get anything that we wanted at all. Um, that's a bit of a shame, really. Oh well. Anyway, the area that we're actually going to go to next is um, is on along the way to uh, Medulla, actually. So we'll just go this way instead. <coughs> we are now going to go and unpetrify a lady. Um, I don't know whether I've actually done it or not yet. I don't think I have. So let's go that way and let's continue down the path. Okay. So here's Medulla. Uh, have I gone the right way? Yeah, I have. So if we come to the left up this way, 
This will take us to our next location. Okay. This area is always really confusing to traverse around. It's a bit of a strange place. Have we spoken to Ben Hart yet? I don't know whether we have. This guy's awesome. So, this guy suspects that maybe the statue inside this next room is in fact actually alive. And uh, he is, he's kind of right actually. Um, now, in this room, there is, if you, this statue is at the moment blocking a lever. Now, when you um, use the item to pe unpetrify this woman, you'll be able to use the lever. Now, the only problem is, of course, is um, this room is booby-trapped, so as soon as you hit that lever, you'll get, I think it's something like four, five, six, seven, eight, probably about eight people coming in, this, in the room, and they'll blockade you in, um, and you have to take them all out. So what, we, what I like to do is I like to prepare first, kill the first one here, and also the second one. Um, and if you're good enough, I don't know whether I'm going to be able to do this. I have done, I have never done this before myself, but I've seen people do it in videos. I think I'm going to be okay. I think I should be okay to do this. If you keep hitting these, um, these doors, they'll eventually come off like so. And then you can take these guys out. Ah, I see now this one's actually come down. Ah, okay, that's kind of helpful. So now we've got three guys that come down. I don't, I don't think this happened before. I think maybe this might be an update because um, I think what happened before was they just stayed in the same place. But if you do it this way, then you're not going to get ambushed. So that is all of them killed. Um, so I don't have to worry now. All right, let's um, let's unpetrify Rosabeth. Voice acting on this character isn't great at the start, I must admit.
then perhaps you could consider this an offence. So now, I think at the start of the development of this game, um, they were, she was meant to give you something a lot better than a prism stone. Now, if you guys don't know what a prism stone is, let me just show you what it is. That is literally it. That's all it is. Um, it's it's sort of a a beacon that allows you to guide yourself, so you don't so you can go into certain places um, and remember where you went and stuff. Probably, um, it's really just a a sort of a signal thing. Really, it's nothing special at all. I reckon she was meant to give you something a lot better than that um, in the early builds probably of this game. I was attacked and turned to stone, I think. I owe you my life. If you had not come. Oh, I feel shameful wearing these rags. Um I hate to burden you further, as you've already saved my life. Do you have any clothing that you could spare? I'll take anything, whatever you don't need. I'm not particular when it comes to apparel. Anything at all will do. Just put it on the ground, and I'll change into it later. See now, as you can see right there, she says, put it on the ground, uh, I'll change into it later. But in actual fact, um, you actually give her the equipment inside a menu so I think as you can see that they, 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 um, they must have changed something inside the early builds uh, I'm going to give her the full Alva set other than the helmet because I like to see her face inside um, when I speak to her and stuff it just, I don't know why it's just, just easier uh, where's the Alva, Alva and gloves there it is um, Oh, there they are. Okay, that's really weird. They look so strange on the the Alva helmet. I don't, I don't know. Okay, she also sells uh, Flame Quartz Ring and the Thunder Quartz Ring and the Dark Quartz Ring. If you want to go for those, it also sells small blue bears, yellow bears, and orange bears, which increase defense of lightning, magic, and fire. Also, fire seeds to strengthen your pyromancy flames. Um, which is obviously going to be great for pyromancers. Also, she sells a few pyromancers. Some of them you'll be quite familiar with. Actually, all of these are in the old game, if I remember rightly. Um, all been changed around slightly from the last game. But, uh, yeah. So, here's your pyromancy as well. You can change these um, and increase them. So, there we go. Um, she will now move to Majula. And she'll probably stay. I think she stays there. I think pretty much everybody stays there, in fact. Um, until the end of the game, pretty much. Uh, that's the only thing that I don't like about this game compared to the first Dark Souls. Is the fact that the NPCs don't feel real. They're just, they're just there as like a... You know, you can do it as you like sort of thing. Um, and they're just there as a merchant, almost. So that's the reason why I don't particularly like this game when it comes to the NPCs, at least, anyway. I'm only going to light this bonfire. I'm not going to rest of it because I don't want all these guys to respawn. Inside here, remember rightly, is an Essus Flask Shard. Yes, there is. Okay, awesome. So that's um, an extra shard added to our collection. Now, inside these rooms here, when you do this jump, you can it's 
not this one. There is one of them that has uh, some items in it. It's nothing special, remember rightly, but yeah, it's this one here. Um, but uh, yeah, solar prowler knight and human effigy, so nothing incredibly special. The other side, remember rightly, there's nothing other than a couple of monsters. Uh, we're not going to go that way. Okay. So let's continue on. Shaded woods. I do like this area, I must admit. Uh, I didn't think I would, but um, it's actually not a bad place. Oh, I can't believe I've gotten both then, that was impressive. Uh, a fading soul, so absolutely useless pile of rubbish right there. Uh, gives us only 50, 50 uh, souls. Now, take this place carefully because there is. Up there, a guy that throws stones at you. Um, and he's actually not attacked me this time, but most of the time he just throws like rocks at you. There you go, like that. There's actually two of them I didn't even notice. So there you go. So just be careful around here. Um, because you can get. Um, they can put, he can't take you off guard if you're not careful. Another feral slock stone as well. We've got tons of those, haven't we? How many have we actually got? Six of them. <laughs> We've got six ferrous lock stones. We just don't even need them. Um, this area is another ambush as well because there's another rock throwing guy. And uh, these two come at you as well. So if you come in, if you had attacked those up there, up here, this guy would be throwing rocks at you while the other two try to kill you as well. So let's take this guy out. Do my own. Look at that. Nice and easy. Oh, whoa, I forgot about this. I always forget about this one. This one always puts me off guard. I always keep forgetting that he's there. Okay. And this is, again, another reason why I don't like Dark Souls 2 compared to Dark Souls 1. I still love Dark Souls 2, don't get me wrong. I'm saying all these things. Um, but I just play it because I love Dark Souls 1 so much. I just It's one of those things I can't help but pick out the small things that, that change um, that, that I, I don't like this compared to the first one. Um, and one of them is that the bonfires are just so close to each other you can you can just run to them like that's that's how easy it is uh, up here actually um, we have three ways to go a little sort of crate in there as well which we'll talk to in just a second um, but that way is to go to the second part of the game now the only problem is of course is we haven't killed the last primal boss once we kill the last primal boss or a mass um, a total of one million souls, remember rightly, um, you can pass through that area. Unfortunately, we have not done that yet, so we'll be doing that at another point. This way, um, it takes you to the third quarter of the game. However, you'll need a item called the King's Ring in order to be able to actually get that way, so we're not going that way either. We're going to be going into the Misty Fog, and we're going to be talking to Creighton. Let's have a talk to Creighton. Okay, so Creighton's talking again about um, about Pate uh, and his ring. Now, um, guys, I'm going to end this episode here. Uh, I'm going to try and make these a little bit shorter from now on, I think, because it's um, uh, I think just the best way to do it, of doing this series from now on, I think. So, guys, thank you very much for watching, and we will see you again next time when we try and get closer to the third and final primal boss, sorry, the fourth and final primal boss. Bye guys.